In trigonometry, we started learning about trigonometry with these things called the trigonometric ratios. There are three of them. What are they called? Sine, cos, Sine, cos and tan. And we learned them, like it's no coincidence we call them ratios. We learned them as, uh, you know, a side in a right angle triangle divided by another side in a right angle triangle. So which pair of sides is sine? Opposite, Opposite and hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent or hypotenuse and tan is opposite or adjacent. So all good. We think of sine, cos and tan only as these ratios and only in right angled triangles. Right angled triangles only. Okay. Now that's kind of what the trigonometric world, the trigonometric universe looked like to you last year. But this year what we've tried to do is expand that, okay? So we've done these things. We introduced the unit circle, which is a bit brain bending at the time. But the point of doing that was that you could deal with any angle, right? If you're in right angled triangles, the only angles you ever deal with are acute angles, right? Because they're the only angles you can fit in your right angled triangle. But when you have the unit circle, you've got, you've got quadrants now, right? You can spin round and round and round. You're not limited from 0 to 90. You can go 90 to 180 or 180 to 270 all the way around. You can put in any angle you like, right? So you can go to your calculator and type in sine 135. You'll be like, oh, that's a thing. So you're outside these right angle triangles. We then introduced the sine and the cosine rule. I won't ask you to rewrite them because you've got them in your books already. Uh, but the point of introducing the sine and cosine rule was to say not just any angles, but now we can deal with any triangles. Even if your triangle doesn't have a right angle in it, as we need it up here, if your triangle doesn't have a right angle in it, no problem. The sine rule and the cosine rule can find out any side, any angle that you need. So now our world of trigonometry is a bit broader. You can put any angle you want in there. You can put any triangle you want. And it's this last point under here, any triangle, that we're going to introduce this area of a triangle thing. Okay? Now we know how to find the area of a triangle. If you have measurements, we have a formula. What's the formula for the area of a triangle? You can all say it together, right? It's half base times height. Good. Can you write that for me? A half base times height. Okay. Now, just like when we were thinking about trigonometric ratios, this formula only works in very specific circumstances, right? You need to have a base, and this height is not just any height. Height is short for perpendicular height. Very good. So it's like, you can't always use this formula. Uh, if, for example, you have a, a triangle like this, and you've got like side lengths, but none of these are perpendicular to any of the others, well, you're kind of stuck. You cannot use the half base times height. But now that we know we can use trigonometry to get away from right angle triangles, we can use trigonometry to find the area, the area of any triangle whatsoever. Okay, so go ahead, draw this triangle. You can see I've got um, little a, little b, little c. They are all opposite uh, big A, big B, and big C. Okay, so if I wanted the perpendicular height, because I kind of need that for area at the moment, where would I put it? It's somewhere like here, right? So can you draw yourself uh, one of these lines? By the way, if there's a right angle there at the bottom, this is not only the perpendicular height, we also give it the special name of being called an altitude. Like the altitude of a plane up in the air, it's perpendicular to the ground. So let's call this guy H, okay? Now I'm going to um, do a trick here that's related to how we got the sine rule, okay? If you have a look at this angle here, in this little triangle on the left hand side, okay? I can use some trig here to find out what h is in terms of other lengths, right? For example, if I said sine of this angle, sine of angle c, in this triangle over here, which is right angled, right? There's right angles on both sides here. Which pair of sides have I got and what ratio is it? It's opposite, which is h, over a, which is the hypotenuse. Can you write that for me? h over a. But what this tells you is that now you can state what h is on its own by multiplying both sides of that equation by something. What would I multiply both sides by? Uh, have a look, look carefully, because I've got h not on its own here, it's got the a in the way. So I've got to multiply both sides by a to get rid of it. Does that make sense? I know I've also switched sides as well, which might be a bit confusing. 
But this is great. Now that I know what H is, I don't have to write H anymore. I can just write that that's A sine C. Does that make sense? So I, I put in the pro numeral until I could find out what it is, and that's what algebra does. And now that I know what it is, Brian? Thank you. Now that I know what H is, I don't have to write it anymore. So therefore, the area is equal to, well, it's still half base times height, a half times the base, which is B, times the height. But I don't need to say height anymore. I can say A sine C. Right? Now, this is a bit backwards. Let's make this nice and alphabetical. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. The half is still there like it was from the original area of a triangle formula. But I can write this as A, B, sine, C. It even rhymes. That's convenient. Okay? Now, uh, just on the side here, do you remember I said we use the sine rule and we also use the cosine rule? They work in any triangles you like. Okay? Can you help me remember the cosine rule? Because there's something I want to draw your attention to which is similar between them. I'll give you a clue. It starts with C squared. Ah, very good. It starts off just like Pythagoras, you remember that? But then there's like an extra bit. Minus 2 A, B, cos C. Okay, now do you remember I pointed out to you that to find out C in a non right angled triangle, you need to know the other two sides and you need to know one of the angles, but not just any angle. Which one? Yeah, that's right. See how they match up, right? Now have a look over here. Do you see that this guy here is an angle, but it's not just any angle. Have a look at where it is in relation to the two lengths you're using. Here's A and here's B. So the angle you need is the middle angle. The specific name for that, the fancy name is the included angle. Right? So just like with the cosine rule, um, C is, is the included angle between A and B. Um, here, for the area of a triangle formula, the new one, um, you can't just pick any angle. This guy is the angle, that's a bad N, between or included by length A and B. Okay, 